better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why, Santa Claus is coming down, Santa Claus is coming down, Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, he's checking it twice, he's gonna find out who's naughty tonight. Santa Claus is coming to town, Santa Claus is coming to town, Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping, he knows if you're awake, he knows if You've been bad or good, so you better be good for goodness sake. You better watch out, you better not cry. You better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. Better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town, Santa Claus is coming to town, Santa Claus is coming to
all around me Children play Having fun Tis the season Love and understanding Merry Christmas Everyone Time for parties And celebration People dancing All night long Time for presents And exchanging kisses Time for singing Christmas songs We're gonna have A party tonight I'm gonna find myself Underneath the mistletoe We'll kiss by candlelight Room is swaying And records playing All the old songs Love to hear all I wish that every day is Christmas. What a fun way to spend the year. We're gonna have a party tonight. I'm gonna find that girl underneath the mistletoe. We kiss by candlelight. Snow is falling all around me. Children playing, having fun. Tis the season, love and understanding. Merry Christmas, everyone. We're gonna have a party tonight. I'm gonna find that girl underneath the mistletoe. Kiss my candlelight. Snow is falling all around me. Children playing, having fun. How I wish that every day was Christmas. What a fun way to spend the year. What a fun way to spend the year. must be the wee boys and girls from Carrick Fergus. Oh, how lovely of you to drop in. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Mrs. Claus, and my husband, Mr. Claus, has asked me... <coughs> oh, Mr. Claus, sorry. Santa, as you would know him, has asked me to drop in with you all and make sure you're all being very good this year before he starts distributing the presents. So, have you? Have you been very good? Hmm? Well, I'll have to take a look in the naughty and nice list to check, won't I? <gasps> but before I do that, do you know what? I'm just going to take a wee rest to myself because I'm absolutely exhausted. You see, the reindeers, they're having a big snooze at the minute because they've a very, very long flight ahead of them on Christmas Eve. So I had to come here myself. By magic! Oh, by, by foot! By foot, of course! I had to, I had to get my old skates on and, and slide over the icy plains of the North Pole, yes. Oh, I passed over Iceland and... Oh, no, 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 no. Not the shop. The country. <laughs> and then I got my armbands on, yes. And I had a wee swim across Carrick Fergus Marina. Oh, it was lovely. And then the next thing I knew, I was in the Pirates Play Park. Oh, and I was nervous. I was nervous that that old Captain Hook was going to rear his head. Oh, horrible man. So I stopped and got a wee Maud's ice cream to settle my nerves. Oh, it was yummy. <laughs> so here I am. Oh, why are we here again? Oh, yes, silly me. 
Mr. Claus, summed up, has asked me to check in with you all and let you know that we are full steam ahead in the North Pole to make sure that Christmas will definitely happen this year. And also to check who's been naughty and nice mm -hmm, before we start dishing out presents. So, will I take a look? Mm -hmm, I will indeed. Now let's see. Oh, dearie me. Oh, there's lots of good boys and girls in Carrick Fergus this year, yes. Oh, that's what I like to see now. Oh, oh. Well done to you who are on the good list. But now I must say, there's one or two on the naughty list. Mm -hmm. I don't you worry. We've got some time to fix that, don't we? Yes, we do. And there's lots you can do, you know. So I'm going to let you in on a wee secret. A big North Pole secret. Getting on the nice list. Is that the easy part? Staying on the nice list. Oh, that's the hard part. But there's lots of things you can do, boys and girls. Yes, lots of things you can do to make sure that you stay on that nice list. So, let's have a think. What can we do? We could listen to our teachers. Mm -hmm. Listen to our adults. Mm -hmm. Do your homework. Very important one. And uh, what else? Oh, tidy away your toys. Yes. And oh, the biggie. Oh, ho, ho, ho. absolutely no fighting. No fighting at Christmas or any time, of course. And at the minute, more than ever, we must remember to wash our hands. Yes, and let me tell you, boys and girls, I love a wee singy songy. <laughs> I love singing a wee singy songy, so I always, when I'm washing my hands, sing. We wish you a Merry Christmas. Just like this. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. <laughs> Just like that. Any excuse to have a wee song. Because you see, boys and girls, we all have to play our part and work together, don't we? That's what it looks like in the North Pole. Because the thing is, you see, there'd be no Christmas if we weren't a team. Isn't that right? <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what? Let me tell you a wee story. Because one of my wee elves in the North Pole could tell you all about this. Because this is the story of Mittens McStuffin. This is the story of Mittens McStuffin. The elf who thought he was too short and couldn't do nothing. When Mittens was a baby, he was as big as anyone. The difference could only be seen around the age of 21. As we know, elves are so long in the scene that they remain the size of babies till their late teens. As all the other elves grew bigger and taller, oh, it seemed like poor Mittens only got smaller. As hard as he worked and all the effort he had given, he couldn't keep up with what the others did for a living. So for Mittens' size, he created a job, which was making tiny things like tiddlywinks and the odd key fob. Though Mittens dreamt of making big things like a teddy bear or a rocking horse, he took pride and gave 100% care to his career course. One day, as Mittens was tinkering away, he was called to the head elves' office. They had something to say. The news wasn't great for poor old Mittens. Apparently, with tiddlywinks, the kids are no longer smitten. Don't worry, they said, we will move you somewhere good. Like dolls' houses or bicycles or making toy food. <sighs> he tried the dolls' houses, but it was a no-go. Mittens was so short he could barely make a bungalow. 
as hard as he tried at bicycle testing. His feet couldn't reach the pedals where they should be resting. His final attempt at making toy food looked like something the dog had already chewed. Poor little mittens was exhausted and sad. I'm useless at everything, he thought. I really am quite bad. As he drifted off to sleep on the floor on his back, he had horrible dreams of getting the sack. Suddenly, Mittens awoke with fresh air on his face. As he bounced up and down, his heart started to race. It was then he realised just where he was. He was in the back of the sleigh with good old Santa Claus. Of course, he thought. How silly of me. Santa always does a practice run around November 23. And just like that, the sleigh suddenly stopped. <gasps> and onto the ground, jolly Santa popped. Let me see, said Santa. Now, where have I crash landed? Why, of course, it's Carrick Fergus. It couldn't have worked out better if he planned it. For Santa loved the castle and Maud's ice cream, even though his trousers were bursting at the seam. But before he could go for a hot chocolate and Dobbins in, he had to make sure that the sleigh could fly again. Santa soon found the fault, but try as he might, he couldn't reach the part. Then he got a terrible fright. A little voice chirped up from the back of the sleigh. It was Mittens, our tiny hero here to save the day. Mittens announced, I could fix that part with ease. I tried my best, said Santa but my hand got a squeeze. So Mittens slipped down and fixed up the sleigh and Santa and the reindeer shouted, hip hip hooray. Then Mittens became Santa's top mechanic. And if the sleigh broke down, Santa would no longer panic because Mittens was there by his side every Christmas night, making sure all were delivered to the children, tucked up in bed, nice and tight. Now Mittens knew it was because of his just right size that he got to ride with Santa and eat his leftover mince pies. <laughs> oh, isn't that lovely, boys and girls? As Mittens would tell you, there's a perfect job out there for everyone. So if you're doing something and you're struggling with it a wee bit, don't you give up. Maybe that job is just not the one that's meant for you. So keep going. Oh, my dearies, look at the time. I really need to be getting back to the North Pole to help with all the preparations. But, but before I go, I was wondering, could you do me a wee favour? The elves and Sam work so, so hard at this time of year that sometimes they lose their festive cheer. Yes, but we all know that the best way to spread Christmas cheer is singing loud for all to hear. So I have an idea. I was thinking, if we all sang a wee songy, and then I captured up all that Christmas cheer and put it in my cheer bag and I'll bring it back to the North Pole. That would make everyone so happy. What do you think? Will we give it a go? Yes, that's the spirit. Now, what will we sing? Oh, let's, oh, oh, well, it has to be. We wish you a Merry Christmas, of course. So will we give it a go? Are we all warmed up? Oh, yes, get your full voices out now. After three, one, two, three. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh, boys and girls, give yourselves a big round of applause. Look at all that festive cheer in my bag. Oh, I can't wait to bring it back to the North Pole. Oh, and speaking of which,
which I really need to get my skates on. So, to all you wee dearies in Carrick Fergus, I wish you a merry, merry Christmas from myself, Santa, and all the elves in the North Pole. Stay safe, and I'll see you on Christmas Eve. Cheerio! We wish you a merry Christmas and a happy new year. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is safe to say that this year's Christmas light switch on looks very different to our usual street festivities. Despite the circumstances, we are excited to bring some Christmas spirit home to you. You can look forward to a packed program of festive entertainment and activities online and available to everyone. In the spirit of spreading this Christmas cheer, across the borough, may I encourage you to reach out to those less fortunate in our community during these very difficult times. Perhaps you could donate some items to a local food bank or offer toys or a gift to those struggling to make ends meet. I would also like to encourage you to shop local and support our brilliant retailers. They have worked so hard to keep their businesses safe and open to customers, providing warm welcomes, perfect presents and a great service. Every one of us can add to our borough's Christmas spirit simply by buying from the people that bring life to our communities and by giving to those who need extra love and kindness this year. So please show your Christmas spirit this festive season and help those who are in need whatever way you can. I wish you a very happy and peaceful Christmas and a prosperous and healthy New Year. Nowadays, when people think about Christmas, they think of, well, the commercial Christmas, all the rushing about and the lists and presents. But you know, long ago, even in my day, it wasn't like that at all. No fancy Christmas decorations. You'd have made paper chains sticking bits together, which you'd have looked all around. Or if you had decorations, well, there was no health and safety that would cut the hand off you if they shattered, you know? And again, People talked about Christmas boxes, which is where Boxing Day comes from. My father would always talk about a Christmas box. There was none of this fancy paper. If you had brown paper, that was about it, you know? So I think of storytelling as being part of that old Christmas. The Christmas where it wasn't about how much you got. You were very glad to get the lumpy stock and that you'd put up above the hearth. You might have, you know, an apple, an orange, a big shiny penny. So I'm going to tell you a couple of stories set back then. The first concerns a schoolmaster, a man who was strict but fair. And it was just coming up to Christmas holidays. And he said to the boys and girls, boys and girls, immediately everybody sat up because they knew the big cane and they would have used it. He said, I'm going to set you a competition before Christmas. And there's a prize. Oh, excitement. Out from under his desk, he brought a lovely silver sparkly angel. Now these wee boys and girls, they wouldn't have done anything like that. Fancy. He said, what I want you to do, everybody go out and on Monday bring me back something small and something shiny from nature. Whoever brings the best thing will get the silver angel. Well, the fast runners went down to the shore. They got shells and pebbles and bits of sea glass. Some went out into the forest for nuts and berries. Some went to their mummy's button boxes and got the big shiny pearl buttons. And the first day back at school, well, the teacher's desk was covered with small shiny things. And like many's a teacher before and since he thought, why did I set this competition? But then he looked up, he was calling the roll and he said, who's missing down there at the back? Please, sir, we hear. They probably said, we queue. The teacher started to take the roll and he looked around and he said, who's missing down there at the back? And a hand went up, please, sir, it's we queue. And they likely said, we queue. Now Hugh was the youngest of a big family. It took the mummy a long time to get them all wished out to school and he was always late. He was the sort of wee boy you'd see with a bag hanging off his shoulder, the coat here, gawping and looking around. He always had a story when he was late. Teacher sighed and said, we'll wait for the competition till he gets here. The door opened. Up here, boy. Sir? The 
door opened. Up here, boy. The boy looked up at the master. Sir? Well? Why are you late? What have you brought for the table? The table? Oh, of course he'd forgotten. Well, why are you late? You didn't bring him to the table. No. What happened to you the day? And out from under his jumper, he brought a wee bird. He said, sir, can you fix that? Can you make it better? I found it on the way to school. And the teacher looked. It was a wee robin. I was frozen. There was nothing he could do. And he just kindly shook his head and said, I'm sorry, Hugh. I can't help the wee bird. And the wee boy's lip trembled and a big tear trickled down his cheek and landed on the table. A big, fat, soft tear. And just then the winter sunlight sparkled in that tear and the teacher said, I have a winner for our competition. What Hugh has brought us today is something very special for Christmas. He's brought us a single tear of pity. And as long as you live, boys and girls, never be afraid, never be ashamed to shed a tear for any living creature. And that's how we, Hugh, won the Silver Christmas Angel. I think he deserved it, don't you? The story I want to tell you is about an old man who lived in a small cottage high up on the mountainside. He and his wife had reared their family there. They'd lived there for 50 years. But in the year between last Christmas and this, the old woman had passed away. But sometimes in that cottage, looking around at all her delf and all her wee bits and pieces, sometimes he felt as though the veil between himself and his wife was so close he could almost put his hand through and touch her. It was Christmas Eve and his wee granddaughter had come up. She said, Granda, Granda, Mommy says you have to come down to us for your Christmas dinner. No, I bet. He says, no, no. I've had my Christmas dinner here for 50 years. No, no. I'm not leaving now, not at all. You run down, there's a big storm coming. You tell your mummy I'm all right. I've got a wee fowl, I'm gonna roast. And I've even got a pudding somebody made for me. You go on down now before the storm comes. And the wee girl pulled up her hood and ran down. The snow was just coming in. And as she came down near the foot of the mountain, here she saw this tall figure with a bony face, an hourglass in one hand and a scythe in the other. And she knew. She was meeting death on the road and he pointed a bony finger at it. He said, little girl, tell your grandfather, tomorrow I will call on him. <gasps> she screamed, she ran up again, she said, granda, granda, I met death on the road. He's coming for you tomorrow. Come down and be with us. The old man shook his head and said, no, daughter. No, I'm grand. I'm welcome to go. I'll go with him any time. The old man shook his head. He said, no, no, pet. I'm fine here. I'm ready to go any time. I'd be with your granny. No, don't you worry about me at all. You go on down now before the storm gets any worse. Well, the storm hit that night and the wind raged and the old man got up early and his roast chicken just coming out of the oven is putting on steaming when there were three knocks at the door. I knew who it was. He opened the door and death stepped in. Set down his argus, set down his scythe and the old man said, how long have we got? till that sand goes through the hourglass. Oh, plenty of time. Come on, sit down till I eat my dinner. And they sat together at the table and they talked. And they had plenty to talk about. There wasn't one family that death hadn't touched. And they talked about people long gone, people recently gone, people waiting on. And then, out of the corner of his eye, the old man saw the sand was almost through the hourglass. He set down his pudding spoon and he got up. I said, time to go, I suppose. And Death got up too and lifted the scythe and the argas. The old man put a big muffler around his neck and got his cap, was reaching for his coat when Death said, where are you going? He said, with you. My granddaughter said you were coming for me today. Ha, 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 said Death, not at all. I told her I would call with you today. No, no, he said, I knew there was a storm coming. I'm away over the mountain. There's an old lady there. She's 88 years old. Oh, she's been calling for me for weeks now. Not at all. I just knew I needed a place where I'd just sit for a while and wait out the storm. Not at all. You're grand. And away death went to do his work. The old man lived in that cottage for another ten years. And when death finally did come for him, he'd learnt an important lesson. He'd learnt to greet death as a friend. <laughs> Thank you.
Hello to all my lovely friends in Carrick Fergus. It's me, Mr. Hullabaloo, the magical storyteller. I'm delighted to be with you this evening and so excited about the big Christmas light switch on. Why, my friends and I can hardly wait to celebrate with you all. Christmas really is a magical time of year, a special time to spend with all your family and friends. And speaking of friends, I've got lots of special friends that live in the magical kingdom of Hullabaloo. Would you like to meet them all? You would? Well, we've got an extra special treat for you tonight. A magical winter story. So sit back, relax and enjoy the fun. Would you like to meet my friend Jingles, everyone? Brilliant. Watch this, boys and girls. We'll need to do some storybook magic to make him appear. If I take a splash of sunny yellow and a dash of rosy red, a sprinkling of jingly bells upon his little head, throw in a rainbow beam and what do you know? It's jolly Jester Jingles! Ta-da! Here to say hello. Hello Jingles, it's nice to see you today. Look at all of our friends, the boys and girls who have come out to play. Have you brought any of your friends with you today, Jingles? You have? Oh look, boys and girls, it's Jingles' teddy bear, Bobbin. Let's give Bobbin Bear a nice friendly wave hello. Jingles, Bobbin, would you like to share a story today? You would? Well, I wonder which story we could share together. Have you got a clue for me? Jingles always brings a story clue to see which story we're going to tell today in the kingdom of Hullabaloo. What's this, Jingles? Some gingerbread. Mmm. Boys and girls, do you like gingerbread? Rub your hungry tummies if you like gingerbread. I think I've got a very special story all about a very special gingerbread man. Shall we begin, boys and girls? Once upon a time in the kingdom of Hullabaloo, it was winter and Bobbin the bear wanted to go and visit his cousin Ola. Ola is a very special type of bear, boys and girls. Does anybody know what type of bear she is? That's right, everyone. She's a polar bear. Cousin Ola likes living where it's cold. I like the cold bobbin, she said, because she has her nice warm winter jacket, her favourite winter boots and her nice warm gloves. But Bobbin the bear was freezing. Can everybody shiver? Oh, I wouldn't like to live in the winter woods all the time, Cousin Ola, said Bobbin. My ears are freezing. Cousin Ola had a special surprise for Bobbin. It was a brand new winter woolly hat to wear. Bobbin likes his new hat with the pom-pom on top. I wish I had a special present I could give my cousin Ola, he thought. Just then, Bobbin the bear had an idea. Off he went to visit Dotty in her kitchen. Dotty will know what to make for Ola. Dotty is our cook in the land of storybook. And that day she was ever so busy in her kitchen, baking lots and lots of gingerbread. That's it, said Bobbin. Dotty, will you help me make the biggest gingerbread man ever for my cousin Ola? Of course I will, said Dotty. But I'll need to ask Sprinkles the mouse for some help. Sprinkles was the little kitchen mouse. He lived in Dotty's kitchen in a gingerbread house. Little Sprinkles gets his name because one day when they were baking, some rainbow sprinkles fell on top of his hat. They're still there to this day, so that's why we called him that. Will you fetch the ingredients, Sprinkles? said Dotty. So, boys and girls, we can all help to make the gingerbread too. Come on, everyone. Pick up your bowls and the flour. 
You put the flour in the bowl, then the sugar and spice, then you mix it all together so it tastes really nice. And when you mix the gingerbread in the bowl, you get a rolling pin and you give it a roll. Roll forward and back. Roll forward and back. And when you roll the gingerbread nice and flat, you get a cookie cutter and you push it down splat. Look at the gingerbread man we have helped to make. Dottie and Bobbin decorated the gingerbread man. She gave him two little raisin eyes, boop, boop, a sweetie button nose, and squiggly white icing from his head to his toes. I'll pop him inside the oven to bake. I wonder how long the gingerbread will take. But something happened that day that had never happened before. There came a tap, tap, tap from behind the old oven door. When Dotty opened up the door to the oven, the gingerbread man jumped out. She chased him round and round the room and he began to shout, Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. Na, 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 na. Stop that cookie, said Dotty. What a cheeky little biscuit. Dotty the cook ran and she ran as fast as she could all around the kitchen. But no matter how hard or how fast Dotty ran, Dotty couldn't catch the gingerbread man. Sprinkles, the gingerbread man is getting away. Sprinkles the mouse tried to catch the gingerbread man, but Sprinkles the mouse couldn't catch him either. The gingerbread man laughed as he ran. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. The little gingerbread man opened the kitchen door and ran out across the fields of ice and snow, running as fast as he could go. Bobbin Bear said, My present for Cousin Ola is running away. But being a bear, he couldn't run very fast. He could only run slow. And the gingerbread man laughed, running as quick and as fast as he could go. Next that day, Cousin Ola was out on her sleigh. But even though Cousin Ola's sleigh went fast, that gingerbread man just ran right past. But look up ahead. What do you see? Is it a reindeer hiding behind a tree? Huh? Rudy the reindeer shook his head and said, I don't really eat gingerbread. I'd much prefer a nice juicy carrot instead. At that very moment, so our story goes, there came a chubby snowman with a carrot nose. A chubby little snowman had a carrot nose. Along came a reindeer and what do you suppose? That hungry little reindeer looking for his lunch. He ate the snowman's carrot nose, nibble, nibble, crunch. <laughs> oh dear, the reindeer and the snowman were so busy chasing each other that the gingerbread man thought, I'm getting away, everybody's forgotten about me. Na, 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 na. But soon the gingerbread man came to the edge of a frozen river. It made his little gingerbread toes begin to shake and shiver. But he noticed that that day something special had happened to the water. The water had turned to ice. <laughs> the gingerbread man thought it would be nice to go skating on the ice. But that little gingerbread man's head was so full of sugar and spice, if he had only taken time to read the sign, it said danger. Thin ice. The gingerbread man jumped on the ice. It cracked and he fell in. Help, help, cried the gingerbread man. Gingerbread cannot swim. But a sly old fox was swimming nearby whenever he heard the gingerbread man cry. Oh, my dear sweet little biscuit, my clever little cookie, climb upon my tail and I'll swim you across the river. There's no need for a gingerbread man like you to shake and shiver. So the gingerbread man climbed on to the fox's tail. Then the fox said, Why don't you climb on my back instead? So the gingerbread man climbed on to the fox's back. Next, the little gingerbread climbed all the way up onto the fox's head. And I think we all know how this story goes. The fox said, why don't you climb upon my black pointy nose? When the gingerbread man climbed onto the fox's nose, he what? gobbled him up from his head to his toes. 
That was the end of the gingerbread man. He couldn't outsmart the fox, no matter how fast he ran. Dotty the cook arrived just in time, and she said, Crumbs! Because that was all that was left of him. Bobbin Bear began to cry. Dotty, that was my present for Cousin Ola. What am I going to make her now? But Dotty said, Don't worry, Bobbin. Why, tomorrow we can bake some more gingerbread. Why don't we make Cousin Ola a nice warm mug of hot chocolate instead? So that's exactly what they did. Bobbin Bear and Cousin Ola enjoyed a nice warm mug of hot chocolate on a winter's day. All's well that ends well. Unless, of course, you're made of gingerbread, that is. We hope you all enjoyed our magical winter story. But guess what, Jingles? Santa Claus will soon be here. I'm so excited! Christmas! Christmas! Merry Christmas to all our friends in Carrick Fergus from the Kingdom of Hullabaloo! Decorating the tree Twinkle little fairy Jolly bright and merry Ho ho Santa looks like me Hanging up your stocking Cradles are a rocking Troubleinas making angels out in the snow Cheeky little wishes Sneaky little kisses Underneath the mistletoe Jingle the bells Those jingle bells Stars in the sky will guide the sleigh Upon the par of magic spells, Santa Claus is on his way. Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas, everyone! It's Christmas, a time that we spend all Christmas. With family, friends, come join us all. We welcome you to our Christmas time with Hullabaloo. It's Christmas, a time that we spend all Christmas. With family, friends, everyone ho 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 hello Carrick Fergus Santa here I'm so terribly sorry that I cannot be with you this year Carrick Fergus is one of my best places to visit especially the castle now don't you forget all you wee ones you need to be in bed nice and early so that I can get round to delivering your parcels. But hopefully I will be with you before you usually go to bed. Sorry, get up in the morning. So again, have a lovely, lovely Christmas and I'll see you next year. Bye bye.